Okay, we'll start now in the name of the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit, and God, Amen. Christos Anesti, uh, Christ is risen. <clears throat> um, I'll try to be as brief as possible today. Um, thank you for joining us at the new um, uh, edited time or abridged time. Um, hopefully, we'll continue with this time for um, as long as we need to. Um, <clears throat> today is the fourth Sunday of the Holy 50 Days of the Resurrection. Um, and uh, I hope you read the Gospel of today. If not, you can maybe look at it while we speak. Um, the passage today is from the Gospel according to St. John chapter 12, verses 35 through 50. Um, and <clears throat> uh, here is a breakdown of all of the Sundays of the Holy 50 Days. Um, very similar structure to what we see in the Great Lent, where every day is organized by the church, regardless of whose uh, feast we commemorate in the church. Um, and the theme here is very clear, which is life and resurrection. Um, and here we have a journey, instead of the journey towards death in the Great Lent, we see the journey towards life or the new life. Um, and today the church sends the message that God is light um, and he is the source of light. And this is especially uh, blessed for us at Holy Transfiguration because Christ reveals his light and his glory um, and his power of the resurrection on Mount Tabor. Um, last week, as you remember, um, we read from the Gospel according to St. John chapter 4, um, where the Lord Jesus speaks to the Samaritan woman about having or be, being the water um, or the fountain of living water. Um, as he tells her, if you believe, um, uh, you, or the one who believes, um, will have inside of himself um, a fountain of, of flowing wa water. Um, <clears throat> so, as you can see here, we need all of these things to live. We need bread, we need water, we need light. Um, and without these things, there is no life. Um, and similarly, without God, we have no life in this world or in the world to come. Um, so before we get into um, the passage of today, I just wanted to give you a brief summary about St. John's um, uh, the books, the five books that he wrote in the Bible, and how, as you know, he wrote his gospel, he wrote three epistles in the New Testament after his name, and he wrote the book of Revelation, right? Um, and all of his writings, um, or his writing style, is very unique. Um, <clears throat> it's very spiritual, um, and um, contains somewhat of a mysterious or sacramental character, um, which is probably why the church uses it but also because the focus of the gospel, especially, is on the heavenly things and the spiritual things. Um, St. Mark often speaks more of the, you can say, not the worldly things or the physical things because he's speaking to the Romans. St. Luke oftentimes um, concentrates, uh, because he speaks to the rights to the Greeks, on the emotional aspect of things or the healing because he was a physician. And St. Matthew, because he writes to the Hebrews, focuses more on the mental aspect of our, our spiritual life. But St. John kind of is all-encompassing and, and focuses mainly on, on heaven and the spirit and the life in the spirit. And when you read these five um, books, as His Holiness encouraged us to do, um, you might notice that St. John repeats a lot of words, uh, certain words often, um, or phrases, and especially in his epistles, you'll see this very clearly. Um, here are some of the words, but um, uh, I encourage you to do your own research and to, to find other things that are repetitive. So these words um, sometimes can be used interchangeably. Um, and uh, it's, it's pretty, we'll, we'll have a couple of examples in a minute. I don't want to belabor this point, but I just wanted to show you a, a, just one beautiful aspect of um, one uh, author of the Holy Scriptures, how the Holy Spirit used him in this way. Another um, 
if you're interested in the literary styles or devices uh, that St. John uses. Um, another one is called juxtaposition. I don't want to give you an English lesson here. Um, I'm not the I'm the last one to do this, but basically what it means is he compares and contrasts two different things, usually two opposite things. Um, and I'll give you a, an example right here from um, his uh, second epistle, um, <clears throat> uh, just so that you see um, the beauty of his, his, his writing. Uh, so um, St. John in his, sorry, first epistle, second chapter, he writes, he who loves his brother abides in the light. So this concept of light is not just in um, the gospel of today, um, but actually in several chapters in the gospel, as well as several parts of his epistles. So he says, he who loves his brother abides in the light and there is no cause for stumbling in him. So here he's equating the word light with love, right? Um, and then he does the opposite juxtaposition, but he who hates his brother is in darkness and walks in darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes, right? We'll talk about this concept with, about, with the example of St. Paul, hopefully at the end. Um, but here he shows the same words can be exchanged and mean the same thing. Love is like light and both of them are like God. So when we love, we love with the power of God. And when we are in the light, we are in abiding in, in God. Um, I don't want to get too uh, uh, off, off track here. But when God says, I am the light, or I am the way, or I am the bread, or I am the fountain of living water, he's saying the same thing. He's saying, I am God. Even that phrase, I am, as we said before, is a reference to God Almighty, which is why when he said this, um, many people were upset who didn't believe in him. And they use this as an opportunity to accuse him of blasphemy because he made himself equal to God, which he was. Um, so this is just helpful for us to understand when God says, become sons of light. He's talking about becomes children of God, like the fathers explained to us. Okay. Um, Another example we see in actually not one of St. John's writings, but in the, the fraction of the resurrection, there's two. We often do the one, uh, we often pray the one to the Father, but for the one to the Son, it has a good juxtaposition as well, right? He, um, so towards the end of the fraction, the priest prays, and we too, who were sitting in darkness for a season, he granted us, God, granted us the light of his resurrection through his holy incarnation. What does that mean? Um, well, here he's equating, uh, in one example, light with life, right? Um, we're sitting in darkness and in the shadow of death, like the scriptures say, right? We're sinners. We're dead in sin. Without Christ's death and resurrection, we have no life, right? That couldn't happen except how? Un unless he took flesh, right? Um, so this light gives us um, the blessing of eternity, right? The power of God's death and resurrection gives us life, right? And then the, the priest continues pray, praying, may the illumination of your true knowledge shine upon us. Well, where did knowledge come from? It's the same thing as what St. John is doing. He's, he's um, replacing light and life and, and knowledge um, and being like Christ, right? May the illumination of your true knowledge shine upon us that we may shine with your living in an image. The light gives us knowledge and wisdom that we may live according to Christ's example. And when we do it, we become like Christ, like the moon reflects the light of the sun, right? Um, <clears throat> so uh, that was just a nice example. I thought um, we could uh, contemplate. Um, the, the next example uh, I, or quote that we take from St. Augustine, in which he compares last Sunday's gospel to this Sunday's gospel, or the, the example of water um, with the Samaritan woman to the example of light, right? And he comments on the prayer that we, um, uh, we say, if, you, if you're familiar with, in the Matins Raising the Incense, which is taken from the Psalms, and we also pray it in the first hour of the Gbeya when we say, in your light shall we see light, um, for with you is the fountain of life. Um, and St. Augustine says, okay, we're talking about fountain and light. We're talking about water and light. Third week and fourth week. 
right? And so he says, um, for bodily uses, light is one thing and the well is another, right? Two opposite things, right? No, when oh, of worldly well. things. Um, but he says, our mouth seeks a fountain, our eyes seek the light, right? When we thirst, we seek a fountain. When we're in darkness, we seek light. And if we have to get thirsty at night, we, we look, we get a light to go to the drinking fountain, right? <laughs> so uh, here, St. Augustine is trying to get us to the point that it's one and the same, right? And that's what he says here in the next slide. He says, with God, the light and the well are the same. Um, the one who shines on you so that you may see him is the same one who flows to you that you may drink him. These are just different examples of the same point. Um, and St. John uh, uh, repeats this this uh, this usage of of um, kind of just like Christ in the parables when he for example in Matthew 13 when he talks about the parables of the kingdom he uses many different examples to talk about the kingdom of God just so that we are very clear about um, who we're dealing with and what we're describing. And it just shows that there's so many beautiful things that we can use that God has given us in this world to, to help us understand more about him and his kingdom. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so um, I just thought this quote was nice. Uh, St. Cyril, the, right after he became patriarch, um, as the custom was, they would send messages, um, usually during the Great Lent or so, or even before, <clears throat> to tell the people when to start the fast and when the fast will end. Um, and uh, St. Cyril was no um, exception to this. And he writes <clears throat> about uh, various things in, in his epistles, but the first one, um, he, he talks about the light. Um, and he says, the beams from these great and many blessings shine down upon us and the light of our divine feast is rising. So here he's saying the, the feast itself, because you know, as you know, um, we would, they would come either very early in the morning or very late at night and start in the darkness and end in the light. Um, and, and they would light many different um, candles in the church, especially on the feast. Um, <clears throat> so he says, once again, the bright festival draws us to itself. Um, so Easter is drawing us to itself or, or the risen Lord is drawing us to himself right? It's admonition that vice is to be abandoned, meaning when we come to the light, we have to get rid of the darkness. Um, and, and that's probably the, the main thing that reminds us of when we're talking about light, we say, well, how, do I have darkness in me? Do I have sin in me? That's preventing me from, from filling, uh, being filled with God's light or reflecting God's light. And that's why the saints were um, like lights shining in the world, like stars, um, shining in the world because they took away from themselves the obstruction by the grace of God, which is sin. So the more we sin, the more the darkness is covering us and we can't see the light. It's like when you're um, walking in the sun and um, a building gets in your way, you're going to be in the shade. And the bigger the building, the more the darkness, right? So the bigger the sin, the, the less we are able to reflect God's light. Um, and um, this is why um, in the gospel of today, the Lord Jesus Christ says, a little while longer, the light is with you. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. Um, so in a sense, he's saying what? God is with you, right? You're born um, or baptized in, 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 in the Lord Jesus Christ. We have been granted the blessings of his um, incarnation of his death and his resurrection and we have the holy spirit um since the day we were chrismated um stay in christ right walk while you have the light and and if we're not constantly um uh, participating with god or interacting with him or praying or reading the scriptures or trying to live a holy life then the darkness will overtake us right <clears throat> um and uh, he says he who walks in darkness to, again, recapitulate, uh, sorry, uh, juxtaposition. He who walks in darkness does not know where he's going, right? Uh, while you have the light, believe in the light that you may become sons of light. Um, so here's a perfect example of how Saint, uh, the, the Lord Christ himself in the Gospel of St. John is using the example of light and, um, and believing 
and living a holy life, right? That's, and then he uses the opposite of um, darkness, not knowing what you're doing, right? Or completely going the wrong way um, and death. Those are all, this is how um, one word light means so much more. Okay, um, so the question we have to ask ourselves, um, what is it that is in my way of seeing the light of Christ or the son of righteousness? Is it my anger? Is it my pride? Is it my jealousy? Is it my love of the world? Is it um, uh, my love of food or drink um, or gossiping or sins of, of, of the tongue? Um, what is it? For each one of us, we might have different obstacles um, or multiple obstacles, but we have to work on uh, running away from them or eliminating uh, those obstacles by the grace of God. Um, and, and that's uh, the, the main message of today. The Lord said, I have come as a light into the world that whoever believes in me should not abide in darkness. So here is the faith. Uh, the faith, our faith is important. Um, God doesn't want us to stay in the state of darkness. That's why he came. <laughs> That's why he took flesh. Um, so we have to believe in him. What does that mean? Um, how can faith help? Well, we need to trust in him and hope in his promises and strengthen our faith in, in God Almighty um, so that he may bring his promises to pass. It's easier said than done, but at least we have to try. Um, so, um, <clears throat> uh, St. Augustine has uh, a good example of what we were saying before about how the saints are lights that reflect the light of Christ. He says, all saints are lights, but they are illumined or illuminated by Christ through faith. This is, the faith is what breaks down our obstacles. Um, uh, and he says, and everyone that becomes separated from him will be enveloped in darkness. We, we can't separate ourselves from him. Um, and he says, again, all have been found by him in a state of darkness because we're, like in, we, we say in Psalm 50, in sins my mother conceived me, right? That's why uh, we need to be baptized in, at, as early as possible. So he says, but so they do not remain in darkness in which they have been found. They ought to believe in that light that has come into the world. We have to strengthen our faith in Jesus Christ, the son of God, who is light of light and true God of true God. Um, and this is one of the first steps. If we don't believe, nothing will happen. Um, it's, it's something that we shouldn't ignore. Say, yeah, I believe in Christ, but don't ignore the fact um, that that we we might fall in the trap of having the outward form of godliness yet denying its power right the faith results in relying on god constantly or daily um and depending on the grace of god um and it takes practice um it takes a rem reminding ourselves where is god in my life um am i putting him at the forefront um with all of my issues not the good only but even even the difficult situations <clears throat> Uh, and then um, St. Athanasius talks about, in, in one of his resurrection letters, he talks about light and grace, right? Um, when we sit in the sun and bask in its light, we receive God's grace. So he says this, the person who accepts God's grace is not illumined by mere physical light from the sun or moon or even the host of the stars. Rather, he allows, he glows all over with the radiant brilliance of God. Right? This is a beautiful uh, phrase, but just like the moon glows all over with the brilliance of the sun, um, because the moon accepts, or it, you know, when there's a, an eclipse, right, the earth gets in the way of the sun and the moon, so it doesn't shine, right? But um, in a full moon, no, right? It's glowing all over with the brilliance of God. So then he says, we are the people on whom the light of the truth shines, um, the Christians, uh, and who look to the Son of Righteousness. Okay, um, if you can mute. <laughs> Sorry, I, I don't have the capability right now, um, but if you can kindly mute yourselves. Okay, um, <clears throat> then, so here's the last point, um, the, the last couple of slides and we'll finish. So, you know that famous movie where it says, can you handle, you can't handle the truth, right? So, well, 
as St. John says, the truth and light is almost is the same thing, right? So the question is, can, can you handle the light, right? When sometimes when the light is so strong uh, and we're sitting in darkness, right, in a movie theater or something, um, our eyes can't handle the light when we go out. It b almost blinds us, right? It causes a blinding effect. Um, and when we're sitting and in darkness, the light may feel too strong for us at first. Our eyes are not ready or prepared to receive the light. Um, and maybe this is what happened with Saul of Tarsus, right? Who became St. Paul. When the Lord appeared to him in Acts chapter nine and became, he became blind for a time. It was only until uh, what uh, Ananias came to him, laid his hands on him and baptized him. Um, and, he, and he was told to say to him, brother Saul, receive your sight. Um, or before actually he said that, he said, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road as you came um, has sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. So here he's saying, um, you're blind because you are living in darkness, right? Because you were, you were fighting against God. But now that you are willing to come to him and to receive the light, be baptized. Believe, be baptized. Um, and it said he received his sight at once. He arose and was baptized all in one sentence, right? Um, so when we're baptized into his death and his resurrection, our eyes are open to receive the light, right? And that's why sometimes people don't understand. They don't get it um, because the, the, their eyes are not enlightened yet. Um, so we pray that God, and even if we're used to the light and we stay in darkness, that blinding effect happens again. Um, so we need to be constantly um, asking God to open our eyes that we may receive the light. Um, the, the last example um, is with Isaiah in uh, his uh, prophecy, chapter 6. Um, he also couldn't handle seeing the glory of God, um, kind of like on Mount Tabor. He saw the glory of God and he said, what was me? I'm a man of unclean lips. Um, I can't handle this too much glory, right? Um, uh, and what did do God, God do? He sent him the seraph, seraphim um, with uh, tongues from the altar to place in his mouth to cleanse his lips. What is this example of or a type of the symbol of the Holy Communion? Um, with the sacraments, we are able to handle the glory of God. We don't deserve it. Um, and it's too much for us. Um, but out of God's extreme love for us and his condescension toward us, he allows us to be able to um, uh, handle a, a piece of his glory. And that's what happened on Transfiguration Feast, right? Um, the holy apostles, the light was too, too great. The glory of God was too much. They were afraid. Um, uh, but uh, God allowed them to take that blessing um, and they internalized it so much that I'm, I'm sure it was one of the things they saw they never forget. Um, <clears throat> and even uh, St. Peter uh, brings it up in his epistle um, more than once indirectly. Um, and I'm, I'm sure St. John, he saw many things. Uh, that was just the beginning of his revelation. Um, so the last uh, slide, um, it was just a quote from um, uh, the a prophecy also of Isaiah. It's a beautiful book. Uh, many people like to read it during the Great Lent. Um, and there are actually a couple of major turning points in the book um, <clears throat> where we feel the theme changing from darkness to light, from sin um, or hopelessness to hope, um, and from death to life. And one of those transitions is Isaiah chapter 60. Um, and um, just like we say in the in the second litany um, of of the first hour of the Gbeya, um, as the daylight shines upon us, let the luminous senses and brought thoughts shine within us, right? And do not let the darkness of pain hover over us, right? <clears throat> so in Isaiah, um, God says to us, "Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you." For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, deep darkness the people, but the Lord will arise over you. The sun will shine upon you, right? And his glory will be seen upon you. Um, 
and the Gentiles shall come to your light and kings uh, to the brightness of your rising. So this is the same idea when we, when we say, when we are with God, he enlightens our hearts, he enlightens our minds, he grants us the Holy Spirit um, inside of us. Um, <clears throat> That, um, as St. Paul says, he has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. May the Lord grant us the blessing of his holy resurrection and fill us with his light, with his love, with his power, with his truth, with his purity, and with himself, that we may abide in him until we live with him forever. Uh, and glory be to God now and for into the age.